Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guests are from Fujitsu. They have a new cloud offering, and uh, we, today we have Jody Little, who's the VP of the Cloud Portfolio, and Gary Bates, who is the Portfolio Architect Director at Fujitsu. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks, Rich. It's great to be here. Well, hey, I've got your slides up on the WebEx. Why don't we launch into that? Okay, great. So I thought I'd, I'd start with a, a brief overview of cloud and Fujitsu's um, entrance into the marketplace here, and then we'll follow that up with a live demo of our actual global cloud, um, and that will be presented by Gary Bates. So I think it's important to start off with a note from our president, President uh, Yamamoto-san. Um, I think this indicates pretty clearly the strategic importance of cloud to Fujitsu. And, to the point where we believe 30% of our new business uh, will be coming from cloud by the year 2015, which isn't that far away. And just to show how strongly we're committed to that intent, we've uh, underpinned that with strong investment. In fact, in fiscal year uh, 2010, we've already spent over a billion dollars, and in fiscal year 2011, uh, well over 1.2, with even more uh, slated for fiscal year 2012. So um, very serious and of key strategic importance to Fujitsu. And so... Um, You'll see as we go a little bit further along how we plan to, to back that up with a, a wide breadth of portfolio of offerings. So first, uh, a little bit about how we see the marketplace. As you'll see here on, on this uh, uh, slide, on the, uh, the bottom, we look over time and um, on the on the other side, value. So primarily everything on the, on the bottom piece is uh, things that have happened in the past when we had a client server computing era where when uh, enterprise looked to increase efficiency, they were lo really looking at um, applications and virtualizing applications and moving them into private clouds. What we're seeing in terms of the, the future and the future really just beginning now is um, a way to shift the value and and that is really only one way to do that, and that's to, to move beyond just the discussion of applications, but to think about it in terms of a full workload, um, sort of an end-to-end. -end. And that's where really where the shift in value will come, not from doing more virtualization, but from actually shifting into a full workload. And that will be things like adopting software as a service, using um, platform as a service, um, ISV marketplaces and business services. Those are the things that we see enabling uh, increased business mobility. And what we're expecting and, and already starting to see in some areas is kind of a hybrid environment, kind of combination of private clouds on customer premise, um, reaching out and working with public clouds or some combination of um, local and private and public clouds. So this is a, an exciting time, and we think cloud is really and truly a, a huge paradigm shift in the marketplace, and, and we're um, very excited about the prospects going forward, especially uh, starting in these uh, the next couple of years. In terms of Fujitsu's solution, we're offering a full breadth of uh, solutions, everything from cloud professional services, starting off with enablement, um, ad cloud advisory, and roadmap services that will help clients understand and assess which workloads make the most sense for which types of clouds, and also a whole set of services to help them modernize their application, prepare net new applications for different types of clouds, and how to uh, identify what the return on investment will be and how to prioritize from a roadmap perspective which workloads uh, they should move to the cloud when and which, which workloads, quite honestly, they should never move because they're core to their business and probably uh, better off staying within their current environment. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see we have a number of cloud platforms that we support, uh, both private clouds where we offer a product, everything including the hardware, software, the full stack, and a number of different stacks um, for on-premise customer use. Um, we also offer private clouds within Fujitsu premise, and we have our own global cloud platform, which is our version of the public cloud, offering everything from infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, and business process. Um, and we also have a very 
strong relationship with Microsoft and have um, uh, hybrid cloud uh, offerings using their Microsoft Azure. Um, on the bottom you see a number of uh, things that will be coming out very shortly. We're investing uh, very heavily in what we call our cloud marketplace. And this is an opportunity for uh, ISVs to move on to our global cloud platform and uh, to offer software as a service to their end clients. And initially we'll be focusing in on some key vertical industries, primarily healthcare and retail. Um, but across the globe with Fujitsu, uh, global cloud platform in a number of regions, we offer um, a number of marketplaces uh, in different industries as well. So agriculture, for example, is quite big in, in Japan. Um, real quickly, the fundamentals of the global cloud, and we'll zero in specifically on our global cloud platform because this was just recently launched in North America, and uh, we just offered it free of charge for a trial period over the summer and have just gone uh, live recently over the last couple of days, in fact. Um, but it's been running for up to two years, I guess, in some of the other regions around the globe. And it's really focused in and, and proven in, in the other regions um, to work well for enterprise level customers. So in North America, this is really sort of global accounts, um, multinationals that are interested in a standard offering or being able to put their workloads in a standard public cloud offering in multiple countries around the world. Um, but making sure that the data resides within that uh, that country's borders. So our global cloud platform um, has a unique way of doing that. Um, it's for Windows, Linux uh, type workloads. And what you'll see um, very shortly is that um, it has some enterprise levels of security and reliability built in, which we feel are a real differentiator for Fujitsu. Um, ideally, uh, we see the, the best match for this in the short term is around development, um, QA, backup, and DR types of workloads. Um, the Fujitsu Global Cloud Platform is uh, deployed locally in North America out of our um, U.S. Sunnyvale, California data center, which is a, a tier three data center. Um, and it's also deployed in uh, UK and Ireland, continental Europe, uh, Japan, Singapore, and Australia. And the interesting thing about this global cloud platform is that it's identical in every one of these locations. Okay. And this uh, is a picture of how the infrastructure as a service piece works. And we'll be going into a, a demo through the portal in just a minute. But essentially, what you see in the bottom is how a customer will come into our global cloud platform over the internet or the intranet. And it's a very simple system to use. It allows them to choose a, a virtual uh, system template out of a resource pool and to configure and uh, provision their resources um, into a, a secure virtual cloud within the data center. And, and that's protected um, by firewalls and encryption. And so really the global cloud platform is a way um, to build three-tier architectures up in um, I think less than an hour. Gary will give you the exact numbers on that. Um, but really enterprise level complex applications work pretty well in this environment. And you can see on the right hand side of this, uh, traditional IT deployment cycles uh, have a number of steps involved. You recognize these, everything from designing the system, getting the capital approval, installing the hardware, installing the applications. That process can tr traditionally take weeks to months. Um, on the left-hand side, if you move to the global cloud, uh, the deployment cycle is significantly reduced. And it's, it's really nearly as, as simple as a three-step process. So what took weeks to months to provision in the past is now down to one hour. So it's pretty significant time and resource savings there. And just finally, uh, the global cloud platform really does um, provide a lot of agility and lower risk for our clients. It's a, a trusted cloud designed for enterprise workloads, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it results in much faster and less costly or customized implementations, um, a lot less risk compared to commodity, but um, very competitively priced in the marketplace. 
and it's a consistent cloud platform across the globe, as I mentioned, um, which means that you can standardize your applications if you're a multinational or a global company, um, but keep the data resident within that particular country borders um, and running it on the same platform. So all of that saves a lot of money. And I think that um, at this point what I'll do is turn it over to Gary and let him actually show you through the portal what it looks like and how quick and easy it is to use. Okay, thank you, Joey. I'm um, switching over to a browser interface right now so that you can see an example, a working example of the Fujitsu Global Cloud Platform. Um, the address, the URL you can see at the top here is the American instance of the Global Cloud Platform. I also have a few other tabs. As Jody mentioned, that the same standardized deployment exists in several other countries. If I click here, you can see this is the Central Europe instance. Uh, this happens to be the Australian instance. So the same Global Cloud Platform, the standardized platform, is deployed in the same fashion, has the same look and feel in all six different country deployments. The home page here has several things on the left. It provides information on the overview of the service. There's information on all the pricing. There's a library of documents, frequently asked questions, several things you can gain access to on the left. What I'm going to do is really show you how easy it is to provision a complex uh, three-tiered application in, in a matter of uh, less than an hour, as Jody pointed out. First, uh, it's going to ask me for a certificate. Because we're using two-factor authentication, I first have to pick which, which identity I want to log in as. And that will bring me in as an authenticated user to the actual environment. There's four main modules. The, the My Portal is, is the area where you can provision new systems as well as manage existing systems. User management allows you to create new users, administrative users, or other resource controllers that have various privileges. You can manage their certificates and provide access control for all the role-based access control security that you'd want to employ in a, in a, pl a cloud platform like this. If I click on the My Portal area, it will bring up a, a screen that has several other options. The option we'll use to provision a new system rapidly is called the Design Studio. The Design Studio uh, provides a, a very uh, streamlined process, a five-step process for creating a new virtual system. So if I click on Create a New System, the first thing we do is pick a template. And this is the, these are the templates that Jody mentioned in, in her prior slides. You can pick from public templates. A one-tier template would create on the right-hand side a firewall with a certain zone. A three-tier template here creates a firewall with three different areas upon which you can put virtual infrastructure. In addition to using public templates, you can specify your own customer-specific or user templates. In this case, I'll pick one called this Cloud Accelerator. It happens to have uh, two different zones and several other uh, infrastructure components already embedded in it, a server load balancer, some web servers, et cetera. So this is the first step of provisioning a system is, is picking the actual template that you're interested in. The next step is to name your virtual system. So I'll call this a staging environment for our Cloud Accelerator. And to also identify what type of connectivity you want. Internet connectivity allows you to have uh, public facing capabilities. Intranet allows uh, private connections, private network connections from, the, from this global cloud platform to a customer's premise uh, so that you can allow systems that live on this, in this uh, cloud environment to interact or integrate with systems that are already on the customer's premise. So that also creates a, a hybrid type capability. So then after I've uh, named the system and defined the connectivity, I'm in a reconfiguration stage where I can look at any of these virtual infrastructure assets and, and change their capabilities or add more. If I wanted to add additional servers, virtual servers to this environment, I can come over here on the right-hand side and I can pick an actual image. I can pick an image and drag it to the left, and that actually drags the image right onto the, uh, the zone that you drag it onto. You can name the image here. You can set what kind of capabilities you want that virtual machine to be. So there are several different predefined image types of varying amounts of CPU and memory capacity. Um, so you can drag as many images from the right to the left as you want to actually build up your system. You can also add load balancers to your environment. You can drag disks over to your environment and, and add additional disks to any one of the virtual images. Uh, you can have up to 14 different disks. Uh, disks can range in size from 10 gigabytes up to a terabyte each of storage. When you're done configuring the system the way you want it, you would move on to the next step. 
the next step actually gives you an estimate of what that system would cost once it's fully deployed. So this is a pay-per-use environment, and so we don't really know uh, how many hours per month you're going to have it. So the estimates here are based on uh, fully operational systems for, for the whole 31 days of the month. So your estimates here are the worst case uh, charge that you would experience. There's also the ability to export these as PDFs or as comma-separated files so that you can uh, work with these estimates offline. When you click Next here and agree to the terms, you can then do a final confirmation. And this will kick off that provisioning process of that multi-tiered environment with all of those different VM images in it. A system of this size takes about 20 to 30 minutes to deploy, so it will certainly deploy within an hour. Uh, smaller systems take less. Larger, more complex systems uh, could take a bit more. So as soon as this uh, kicks off, it, I'll, I'll go into the System Manager screen. When I go into the System Manager view, you'll see right at the top here on, in, a, in a status of deploying, you'll see that this new virtual system um, called Staging is currently deploying as, as indicated by the blinking yellow lights as well. If I scroll down here a little further and, and look at a, a system that was deployed from the same template previously, here's a, a virtual system called the Cloud Accelerator. If I go into details for this system, you can see all the details uh, that exist. At any point in time, you can go into a reconfiguration mode and you can change the characteristics of these systems. So you can change the characteristics either of a virtual machine or you could add more disk to a virtual machine, add more virtual machines into your layers, et cetera. Uh, in addition to that, there's a virtual firewall that exists with every virtual system that's created. The virtual firewall allows you to control traffic that, that comes from the outside and into these different tiers. Um, so a couple of aspects there on the bottom area of the screen here, you see a couple of public IP addresses. Uh, some of the technical configuration capabilities are here are, are NAT capabilities where we can do network address translation from these outside addresses to internal private IP addresses. We can also control the firewall policy through this uh, GUI interface. So all of these, uh, what, are, what are sometimes comprehensive uh, infrastructure setups are all controlled through different user interface. So if we wanted to look at, for example, what kind of traffic was allowed from the Internet into that DMZ zone, we can turn this filter on and see what type of traffic we're allowing. We could add additional firewall rules um, by clicking on the screen and adding an additional rule. So all of this kind of configuration capability is available. In addition, when you want to connect to your actual virtual machines and, and, and install applications, manage the stuff that sits on the infrastructure, there's a VPN Connect button. The VPN Connect button will establish a client-to-site tunnel into the actual uh, environment and allow you to manage uh, the virtual systems that you have deployed on the cloud infrastructure. So going back to the home page, the last couple of things I, I can show is in the user management area, there's also a uh, show service charges. So at any point in time, you can come in and look at how much consumption you're actually using. It, it aggregates your, the, the cost per month. Um, and in the bottom part of the screen, it shows you the actual usage. There's also a, a PDF download, uh, which will open up a file and show you uh, the actual consumption in, uh, in a report format. Um, and finally, there's the, the inquiries tab here has access to contact information for the global service desk. So our global service desk is a, is a 24 hours a day, 365 day a year staffed service desk that can provide support you know, to our customers of the global cloud platform. So hopefully this provides a, an initial you know, overview of some of the capabilities of the global cloud platform. Well, thanks for that, Gary. That's very impressive. I guess, um, hey, Jody, I'd like to start with you some questions about the genesis of this uh, program for Fujitsu. Um, what was Fujitsu's forte in cloud before you guys launched this? Were you, were you using clouds internally, or was it more of working with partners? How would you describe that? 
Uh, no, Fujitsu, uh, you know, as you know, Rich is uh, the third largest ICT uh, company in the world. So very, you know, 75 years old, strong heritage in technology, um, everything um, from hardware um, up through sensors and mobile devices, et cetera. So um, this was really uh, incubated within Fujitsu using a lot of Fujitsu IP and technology and, and of course, uh, started in Japan at our headquarters and then uh, more recently was replicated and rolled out in all the other regions around the globe. Sure. And then, Jody, why was it so important for you to launch this as a, a global uh, cloud versus uh, one region to, to kick the tires, as it were? Uh, well, it was first launched in Japan and uh, mm -hmm. has been successful there. Um, and we have a, you know, a, a fairly uh, large number of customers on the platform there. Um, in addition to that, we've had uh, local platforms in all of the various regions around the globe. So um, what uh, we saw a need for was uh, an ability to connect um, the platforms in all of the regions. So having the global cloud being standard and identical in all the regions gives us the ability to link across the globe and and also uh, to allow uh, multinationals to do business on a consistent platform in multiple countries. So, it, it, you know, it really does enable um, true enterprise computing. Right. I mean, and um, being global then, I guess, were you trying to uh, address, like, people who needed uh, low latency w with that locality? Was, was that a factor in having these data centers at these uh, uh, global points? Um, it certainly helps. Yeah, low, low latency is one. Um, you know, security and data protection is another. Sure. And then, you know, I don't read much about cloud in Japan. Is, is the cloud something that's widely adopted, do you think, in Japan? Or how would you characterize that? I, I think that... Um, you're probably just not hearing a lot out of Japan, given you know they've had a rough year <laughs> there with the <laughs> earthquakes and tsunamis and all that. Um, yeah. And you know, culturally, they they tend not to be um, as flamboyant as we are here in North America, and and really tout a lot of their successes. Um, sure. However, if you look at our experience and our use cases, and they you know what we're using it for in Japan, you can see that it's pretty widely adopted and and growing. It's a growing market there as it is here in North America. Sure. And then this, uh, I guess, a question for you, Gary. That this this uh, environment that you showed us looks very mature, but it, it doesn't look very um, IT like. I didn't see you use any command lines. Um, was that the idea to make this more accessible to people that might be running um, a data center from a business standpoint? Yeah, I think so. So uh, the, the self-service nature of this by, by, by make, taking what are sometimes cumbersome low-level IT tasks and making them available through the self-service screens does a couple of things. It makes the IT folks' jobs uh, easier and faster, and it also empowers you know, another type of user to rapidly provision infrastructure, for example, for their application development activities, right? So there was a, a, one of the key design goals was to make it, make the interface such that um, it was quite easy to use. Terrific. So I guess a question, I maybe this one's for you, Jody, is uh, what's been the customer reaction to this so far? Yeah, sure. Um, I think I will allow Gary to comment on this as well because we've both been uh, visiting customers here in North America. And I, I think um, the general reaction that we're seeing is um, they're pleasantly surprised to see how easy it is to use um, and how quickly uh, they can, you know, really provision a complex environment. So um, I think they're happy to see that it, it's ready uh, to handle their enterprise workloads. And, uh, you know, the other thing that I think um, is a surprise to many of the customers that we talk to is that um, we're able to help them with, uh, you know, identifying which workloads to move and to help them in designing the solution that they want to move to the cloud because uh, some, there, there's sort of two sets of clients out there. Um, there are clients that have been 
using the cloud for a little while and have workloads that are ready and they can, you know, at the push of a button, upload it onto a public cloud. But it, what we're also seeing is that there's a very large market out there of customers just trying to sort through the hype and understand what does it mean to my environment today, which ones would move, uh, you know, easily, which ones would give me the best return. And so, you know, they're happy to see that. And uh, I think uh, overall we're seeing um, some pretty good reactions in North America. Has that been your experience, Gary, as well? Yeah, no, I would I would echo that. I think the, the ease of use in, in provisioning multi-tiered um, environments for enterprise apps is, is, is a pleasant surprise to many. I also think... Um, we're seeing the intranet connectivity that we alluded to briefly, the ability to not only place workloads here on this global cloud environment, but be able to have private connectivity um, to a customer's existing data center um, provides a lot of options uh, where, where very large databases may, may exist. The ability to put front ends here that can reach back into that type of content is a, is a pretty powerful capability. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of really positive response. Okay. Well, I guess kind of a wrap-up question here, Jody. Um, why is the cloud so important to Fujitsu to offer something like this versus just sell the hardware to people that would build it themselves? Because um, really the way Fujitsu sees the future is kind of uh, one where all of all of the technology is going to be integrated and working together. So. Um, we're not saying, and, and Fujitsu by no means thinks that you should abandon all of the equipment that you have in your data center today and move everything to the public cloud. You know, what we offer is, uh, you know, the full breadth of solutions from things in your own public cloud to uh, things in our public cloud to, you know, combinations in between. Um, they really, Fujitsu really sees technology as a way to enable um, uh, human-centric um, intelligent society going forward. And so we really have this um, vision of using technology to um, empower and to um, improve lives around the globe. So anything that you use today, um, your your iPhone, your, your laptop, your um, tablet, all of that creates a digital footprint and so they really, have, Fujitsu really has this vision that um, very shortly will become a society without borders. So organizational silos, um, ge geographic, uh, national silos, those will all be removed and we'll be able to use uh, technology for the betterment of society at large. So uh, cloud computing is one way to do that. It's going to be a huge enabler. And, you know, one example of, of that is um, being able to store data up in the cloud so that when you have things like natural disasters and such, you don't lose all of those irreplaceable records, birth records and things like that. You know, they're, they're safe and, and they're in the cloud. So that's sort of their long term, as you know, Japanese companies think well beyond one or two quarters. So that's the, the sort of long term vision. Well, that's terrific. Very exciting vision, I think. Well, hey, Jody, yeah. Gary, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having us. You bet. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.